Good morning, and uh, thank you for having me here. It's really a great pleasure for me to be here in Seoul. It's my first time uh, to Korea. And uh, all I saw and all I heard, I enjoyed it very much up until now. And um, let me uh, try to share some of the experiences we made, uh, my colleagues at Der Spiegel and I made with uh, Julian Assange and with WikiLeaks during the last year. It's almost a year now that we started to work with them. And uh, let's check if this works. So. Um, the session is titled WikiLeaks versus Journalism. And uh, let me start at the moment where our collaboration with WikiLeaks began. That was um, back, the collaboration uh, did not begin in 2008, but the first time we recognized that there was something new in the internet, a new leaking platform, was back in 2008, when we discovered that there were documents from Germany leaked into the net, into the internet. Um, it was actually a document of our foreign national intelligence service that we discovered and uh, on the internet, on WikiLeaks. And we actually knew that it was authentic, that it was real, because we knew the document beforehand. So uh, you can imagine that raised our attention. We got curious. But what's this all about? And um, we tried to get in touch with this rather obscure platform back then. And as you know, there was no physical address. There was no name on the website. There was only the website. There was an encrypted chat. And there was an anonymous email address you could refer to. And we did that. And um, you can imagine our surprise when the exchange was in, in German, in fluent German and uh, obviously native German. So uh, that obviously um, uh, bring us to monitor WikiLeaks uh, closer than we already did. Um, let me address a widespread misperception right at the beginning. The anonymous leaking of classified document was not invented by Julian Assange. It was not his idea at the first place. There were leaking platforms before that. Many of you might know Cryptome.org. They are doing this business, this leaking business, since 1969. Some of you might know FIS.org, um, which is another platform doing uh, almost the same business, like uh, WikiLeaks. And Julian Assange did not only know the platforms, he was in contact with their founders before he started WikiLeaks. So actually, um, it was not his original idea, the idea of a leaking platform on the internet, but um, he brought it to a new scope, to a global scope. So what was different in Julian's approach, in Assange's approach uh, with WikiLeaks, and what made him start the project? That's quite interesting, at least uh, from my perspective, being a traditional journalist with a traditional established news magazine, Der Spiegel, uh, because WikiLeaks has been directed against traditional media at the start. The whole idea um, was that it was WikiLeaks versus the media, and Assange has been and still is a vocal critic of traditional media, um, and that hasn't changed, actually. So it was WikiLeaks versus the media, as the title of this lecture indicates in the beginning. When I first met Julian Assange in London in early summer 2010, he explained to me at length his disappointment with traditional media, of which, of course, as I said, I am a classical representative. As you can imagine, we had pretty heated discussions. Assange especially criticized the reporting in times of war, and he criticized a system that would give individual journalists like me uh, the possibility to give stories and documents their individual spin. His approach with WikiLeaks, Assange stated, would be far superior to that, of course. He would supply readers with the original documents, not only their highlights, and without any spin. 
so that they could make up their own mind and get the full picture. He called his concept scientific journalism. It was, by the way, a quite different Julian Assange I met there last uh, summer in, in London. He was not that internationally well-known figure he is today. There was only one press conference, international pro press conference at the time. He gave in April with the release of Collateral Murder of this video from the airstrike in Baghdad. But I could walk with him through the streets of London and nobody would recognize him. And if he would raise some attention, it was not because of his looks or his face, but um, uh, it would be because he was wearing no shoes. He was walking the streets on socks. That was arousing some interest in London. Well, but that all, as you know, has changed rather dramatically only weeks later. When WikiLeaks, together with The Guardian, The New York Times, and us at Der Spiegel, published the Afghan warlocks. Since then, he has lost all his shyness, and you will see him in suits and tie. He created a whole new public figure and a whole new public image of himself. One that is meant to be on eye levels with those in power. So if you follow me up until here, one question will come into your mind automatically. It came in our mind as well. Why would the hyper media hypercritical Assange would choose to give his most valuable material to us, to the traditional media in 2010? Why would WikiLeaks versus the media would turn into WikiLeaks with the media? Well, actually, the answer is rather simple because his first concept of scientific journalism failed. In the first three years, Assange followed his basic idea of putting original documents out on the web. He, he got interesting, very good material out there. Assange hoped that bloggers would pick it up, work with it, bring some added value to it. And he hoped that the power of the web would maximize the impact of the material the principle of crowdsourcing and the principles of peer reviewing it. That was his hope would help the material to spread out worldwide and make WikiLeaks renowned and make the material renowned. The problem was that did not happen. Very few people recognized his work. There was practically no reporting on it. And if major news operations mentioned material that was published on WikiLeaks, they would not credit or even mention the organization. As you probably can imagine, Assange was deeply frustrated by this. There is an internal email to the WikiLeaks mailing list in which he expresses his anger about bloggers and the web community as a whole. So there are many reasons for this unwillingness of the crowd to embrace Assange's idea. But first of all, it takes a lot of time, knowledge, and enthusiasm to work with original material. This is a set of resources you might find above all in two places, universities and the media, where people like me and many colleagues are paid to work with material like this, material like the warlocks and the cables, the diplomatic cables, and to produce their analysis. Take the warlocks from Afghanistan and Iraq, for instance. Or even the latest trove of documents we published, the Guantanamo files. It is really hard work to read and understand them. They are full of abbreviations, military acronyms, and the sheer amount of data can be overwhelming as well. We at Der Spiegel had up to 50 colleagues working on the diplomatic cables alone. Assange understood that WikiLeaks would not survive if he followed his original idea. So he decided to turn to those who not only had interest in resources to work with the material, but bring some attention to WikiLeaks as well. So that brings us to WikiLeaks and the media, which has been, well, yes, you can call it a rocky relationship. The relationship between WikiLeaks and the media was, has not been easy from start. The core problem came up right when we got to know Assange last summer 
and it was the question of redactions. WikiLeaks, as a rule, tended to publish original documents with personal information, even medical records, and even if the accuracy was in doubt. We at Der Spiegel would, as a rule, only print stories and facts that are clearly in the public interest, and we have the policy of approaching people and institutions before we report on them to give them the chance to comment. Back in London, we told Assange that we would only publish WikiLeaks material according to our rule, this set of rules, and that we insist that WikiLeaks would stick to one core rule as well, to redact names of individuals that could be put in harm's way because of the publication. To his credit, Assange agreed to do so. He changed his whole publishing philosophy during the last months and became more and more media-like. There has been much talk about WikiLeaks changing the media and being the possible future of investigative journalism. Our experience actually has been quite different. We have experienced that the established media and the experience of the Warlocks, Cablegate and the Guantanamo files have changed WikiLeaks quite a bit and made it far more media-like. While this rocky relationship I spoke about has not been without cost. As you might have followed, two members of the initial core team that started with the Afghan Warlocks last summer are not on friendly terms with Assange and WikiLeaks anymore. But nevertheless, for Assange, the new WikiLeaks not versus, but with the media model, has obviously proven to be successful. For the diplomatic cables and the Guantanamo files, WikiLeaks now maintains relations to around 70 international media outlets. I don't know how you closely follow that, but the reporting on the cables goes on to this date. WikiLeaks has made regional packages out of them and distributed them to newspapers worldwide. They made big news in India, Paraguay and Israel lately, for instance. So, what WikiLeaks could not do alone has now happened. The impact of the material has been maximized. The attention for the topics and for WikiLeaks as an organization has gone up dramatically. And not to forget, the donations on which WikiLeaks depends did as well. A new and unprecedented form of international media cooperation has been established. Traditional media outlets, some of them even competitors on the same market, have worked together and shared important findings on the material. And despite other claims from various governments, no harm has been done to individuals because of the publications. Quite on the contrary, one can argue that in publishing cables from Tunisia, that included criticism of American diplomats on the lifestyle and obvious corruption within the Ben Ali government and his family, WikiLeaks had at least supported and contributed to the revolution. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a WikiLeaks revolution as others did it, but it contributed. So that brings me <clears throat> to the conclusion, to my conclusion. The relationship between leaking platforms like WikiLeaks and traditional media can be a win-win model. We do not think that WikiLeaks actually can substitute traditional journalism in any way, but it can be an interesting, valuable enhancement. If Assange and his people handle their material responsibly and with care, and choose partners who do the same. Kamsa Hamnida. Um, you said that uh, the, this model is a winning model for the traditional media and WikiLeaks together. Uh, but uh, uh, the interesting thing is that um, a traditional media followed the WikiLeaks similar site, for instance, uh, as, you, as you see uh, from the previous session, that uh, Wall Street Journal opened the safe house, and uh, also another several dozens of uh, leaks uh, followed fro uh, following the uh, WikiLeaks, and in Korea as well, some, one of the newspaper already opened a similar site. So I, I'm curious about uh, the 
the reaction from the traditional, traditional media. Why does traditional media provide such a service belatedly? Not before the WikiLeaks opened, but after that. What, what do you think? <laughs> Well, actually, man, let me answer that from a, from a Spiegel's perspective. The Spiegel has been out there since 1947, and there has been leaking to the Spiegel since 1947. So traditional newspapers really have experiences with wi whistleblowers and informants. Yes. So let me ask the question or give it back. What is really new with WikiLeaks? It's one promise, in essence, which is the completely protection of sources. Uh, during this secure submission system. That's the core promise Assange and WikiLeaks give to their sources, and um, it's the anonymous mass leaking on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this promise to sources is a promise we, as Der Spiegel, give to our sources since 1947 as well. Yes. So um, I don't think you, you really have to look what is really new with WikiLeaks mm. and other leaking platforms. Mm -hmm. And there are some things new, that's the global scope, the global aspect. If mm. you look at it, what Assange really managed to do during the last year, he built some kind of global brand for mass leaking. That really is new and hasn't been there before. Mm. So, but are, are there the similar leaking systems, leaking platform, uh, complementary to the established media? Or is it essential to the media world or journalism world, do you think? I think it's natural that you would, you would uh, uh, try to set up uh, um, a secure digital way to communicate with your existing whistleblowers and informants, mm -hmm. and might, try, might even try to get new informants and new whistleblowers over this channel. I think that's completely natural, that's intelligent to do, but it's not a thing you have to do as a, as a, as a medium, that's my experience. Because okay. There's one problem with all the new leaking platforms, uh, at least that's my experience as a journalist. I work um, for the Spiegel since 10 years, and there's one thing that's my experience, every informant, every whistleblower definitely wants to know. That is, when are you going to print something? When is the story coming up? And many of those uh, new leaking platforms you mentioned, mm -hmm. they don't have any form of back channel. Uh -huh. There's no communications with the whistleblower. So I personally don't think that they're going to succeed because I think that it's essential for somebody who for moral reasons, for ethical reasons, wants to give valuable material to a news outlet or to a leaking platform. I, my experience is that this somebody wants to know what's going to happen with his valuable material okay. and not just dump uh. it into an anonymous Dropbox not knowing what's going to happen. So I got an impression from him, from you, that uh, he has a little bit negative opinion for their kind of uh, sites or platforms. But uh, so uh, when you turn to the WikiLeaks itself, uh, what do you expect uh, the WikiLeaks future in terms of uh, its uh, uh, business model or its view, vision? Can it be sustainable, sustainable in its own way? I mean, uh, speaking of a business model, uh, uh, it's a bit uh, tricky for a non-profit organization, like they call themselves. They depend on donations. The donations have gone up dramatically over the course of the last uh, year. So financially, WikiLeaks is better off than it has been in the past, uh, way better off. Um, but there's one core problem. Uh, as I mentioned, I think uh, Assange really has achieved something in building this global brand, but this global brand has one most important feature, and this most important feature is the submission button on the website. And this core feature isn't functioning since months now. Mm. So WikiLeaks is a renowned brand for leaking, but you can't leak to it anymore. And I think that's mm. a real problem because as an informant, as a whistleblower, I might uh, come there and try to submit something and see it's not working. I might come there once. I might even come there twice, but I don't think that I would go there for a third time, but I would check for alternatives. Okay, so at this stage, I'd like to invite a question or a comment from the floor. If you have, a please hands up and identify yourself, please. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you for the, your presentation. And I'm the professor of Sungibag at uh, News Studies at Songgyeonggwan University. Okay. The 
just a uh, quick uh, question, okay? So you mentioned uh, today's topic, it means, I think uh, in the respect of uh, real important contents of news, I think uh, most of the consumers are very welcome to the WikiLeaks, the news contents. That means the traditional news media uh, have done not the profit in the, the, in the past. So most of the consumers really need to the really good and important news, but uh, that kind of news was not uh, uh, effectively uh, covered by the traditional news media. So that means you have to prove that uh, most of the traditional news media didn't do a very good job. I think so in the future, you have to concern, okay, what is the best way of uh, the composing the traditional uh, news media contents and the contents of WikiLeaks, mm. okay? You just mentioned that is some the, uh, immoral thing or unethical thing, but uh, most of the consumers really want to hear some really hidden contents of the WikiLeaks, okay? So would you comment on that? So what is the real future of the uh, next step? As far as I understood, you were very much taking a sans side in uh, being critical about the traditional media and their reporting on the topics that are now gone public. And, well, for the Spiegel, I can, I can say we've been actually covering the Afghanistan war, the Iraq war, and uh, Gu Guantanamo, for instance, very closely. Uh, so I wouldn't buy this argument, and uh, it would. It was one uh, of the, the, the arguments I had with Julian Assange, being so critical about the existing uh, reporting. But I'm absolutely with you that there are now uh, interesting ways uh, of a kind of a hybrid. And if you think about it, interestingly enough, just what he wanted to do, this model of scientific journalism, is in a way now working not with the bloggers and uh, uh, the internet, the net community, but you have the original documents and you have media outlets all over the world who put their journalism on it, put their analysis on it. And so you have this idea of the original document plus the journalism on it, plus if bloggers like, they can go to the original document and check what we have made out of it. So you have, in a way, this model already, this hybrid model and this model of scientific journalism, not quite as Assange's first idea about it was, but in some slight modification. Okay, I'm sure that uh, you have uh, some comments for, or uh, questions for this presentation, but the, now time is up, so I must end this session. And for, again, thank you so much for your presentation and discussion. And thank you, Professor Mr. Kim. Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much.